brief introductions. My name is Michael Connor. I am one of the or the original developer for Crossbraining. Um, and I've been working very closely with Kristen over the last, how long has it really been, Kristen? Like you and I started working February, probably. Yeah, it was the beginning of winter semester. Um, and so basically we wanted to be as informal as we can. We just have a very short, you can see seven slides. Um, we wanted to talk through how um, Kristen's used cross-braining, what we've learned along the way. Um, and uh, maybe even if you're interested, I can show you a little bit from the teacher interface. Um, and so, yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Um, just so you know, we are recording this. Um, that way we can share it out later. If you have any questions, um, you know, feel free to speak up or if you want to send a message in the chat, Craig will try to make sure he brings that up um, at a good time. Um, on the call from Crossbraining, we have Tracy and Craig. They're just here to help keep things organized. Um, and then we also have Kristen from Jackson College, who you guys all know. So um, just to dive in, um, Crossbraining was founded um, and it was really built out of the need to show parents what was happening in a project-based learning classroom. Um, they were having a hard time understanding how kids could be learning while also building hoverboards and things like that. Um, and so it really it started as a uh, Josh Nichols really just showing um, the parents what was happening in his classroom. And over the course of his teaching career, it evolved into um, him using about 10 to 12 different apps to try and create these 45 second videos demonstrating the learning that was happening through all of these fun project-based activities. In 2016, Josh um, came to me and basically said, I've been trying to show other people how to do this, but there's just, it's, there's too many moving parts. I wanna make an app that pulls this all into one. And so that's what we did. And we really focused on the K-12 space up until uh, February of 2020, um, where we did a pilot at um, Jackson College. And so that's really the, you know, we, we're um, all really based in education. We're really just trying to create a really good app that allows people to use video to assess the things that are difficult to assess via text, um, written questions, things like that. Um, and so with that, Kristen, do you want to talk a little bit about the pilot that we did in, sure. in winter and then we'll go through kind of how that's evolved? Yeah, for sure. Um, so fortunately, when I first started using this, it was pre-COVID, so we were still in um, lab. So when, when I first started using it, it was more, um, you know, just kind of feeling things out, getting the students, you know, comfortable with it. And I ended up finding a lot of uses for it. So um, to provide an example, and I think that in the example videos that Karen had put up in the canvas, um, so one of the things, and I'm sure many of you feel this way that I struggle with, is students kind of getting out of their head and not thinking so much and getting hung up on what they're doing and just getting comfortable with it. And so we actually use this in the lab where once students were getting, um, starting to work on injections, they started using cross braining where they would um, do these 45 second recordings, um, record, you know, withdrawing the medication and then prepping the patient and doing all of that. And what we were finding were a couple things. One, um, the students, when they went back and looked at their video, they would see what they did wrong. So if they, you know, move their hand a certain way where we see that as instructors, but then when we go back and tell them, they often don't realize it and it's hard to bring them back to that. So they were able to see when they were then creating their finished video, they'd see and go, oh my gosh, I did this and that's horrible, so I need to redo that section. So then they would go through and do it again. The other thing we found is that um, these students were, you know, one of the things that we struggled with with, with injections was getting them to increase their speed because they, you know, would be so nervous. And with this time limit, 
they were still able to safely perform the skill, but they got on other head and they would just do it. And I was amazed and Ariel, my adjunct is on here too. And we were absolutely amazed at just how confident they became very quickly. And um, then this is the group that all of a sudden COVID happened. Now, you know, they're not in lab for months. They're actually an externship right now. And this week, we got them in lab, face-to-face um, -face lab again, and brought back injections. And it was amazing. I mean, they just like did it. They're comfortable with it. Um, so it really provides a nice opportunity for the students to assess themselves and see what they're doing wrong with it. So that's um, kind of how we started using it. And then COVID happened. Um, so then we ended up having to um, come up with creative ways, as you all know, to allow them to still do skills. So I was able to send students home with all of the um, supplies for setting up a sterile field, um, doing bandaging, things like that. So they were able to do all of these skills through cross braining, um, and I was able to check them off on them um, for accreditation. And you know they were able to keep doing it until it was right. Or they would send it to me and I'm like, no, you actually, for example, setting up a sterile field, they'd lift the bottle, put the cap back on. I'm like, okay, no, you did this. So then they'd have to go back and redo that. And it was nice for me because I could just even watch their, their videos on my phone. Um, and it just saves a lot of time. So, um, you know, we were able to get a lot of that stuff done from home. So now that we're just this week, finally getting back in labs, um, students are able to focus on the things that are more invasive, like injections and phlebotomy and all those other things. We even did the hand washing. So they did their hand washing um, through cross branding. And when the students create these, they then have to narrate um, the, the procedure, the skill that they're doing. And one thing that I found is, you know, the students learn to do it as more of an instructional video. And as we know, you know, the best way to learn is to teach. And they were so excited to see their finished product. And they're like, oh my gosh, that was me, I did that. You know, so it was really neat to see their progress with that as well. So Kristen, why, why don't I take just a second and show what a lesson looks like Okay. That might help provide some context. And so I'll warn you guys, I have um, all of my stuff is development data. Um, but we do have one, um, one semi health related item, which is uh, taking blood pressure. As a teacher, you can put in the words that the students need to be using. And you can set the different steps that you have to go through. And what you do is you try to um, break your lesson down into the things that would other, like be on your checklist. And then for each step, what the students will do is they have an interface similar to this, where for the blood pressure cuff, they have to um, click and upload um, a short video of that particular step. And then next they go in and, actually I'm gonna to go to a different view of this. So here's the short videos. The, and so the idea is they have to think about how do I capture something in video to demonstrate this skill and then separately, we ask them to type out a narration. What do I have to say to demonstrate this skill? And then the final step is you can ask them, um, you can add questions that you wanna ask them. And I don't know what you would ask for, say blood pressure cuff. Um, what I find really interesting about this is when we, I believe it was when we showed this to Kristen the first time, you said, oh, they did that step wrong. They were holding the bulb the wrong way. Um, and I think that's what I like about it is you get more out of that visual context, but then also what they're effectively doing is creating a short 45, typically 45 second video to demonstrate a task. And when you can explain something to another person, that's when you fully understand it. So that's the, the one or two minute overview of, of how the app uses video. 
And our real goal is to try to keep them as short and concise as possible, because otherwise, if you just give a kid a camera, they're going to give you a documentary. And um, I think the best part here is trying to keep that to something where you're just getting the cliff notes, the things you have to have. Yeah, so um, I'm not sure what all the other schools are doing, but I'm guessing a lot of them are similar to us where um, we are, we're at Jackson College is actually going to be online until fall 2021. Um, with the exception of labs. But what we're being told is what we're doing in labs needs to be, you know, stuff that we absolutely need to do in lab. So what I'm looking for um, at fall is I'm front loading, um, you know, like their vitals and things that we need to actually be able to assess and, you know, determine if they're performing it correctly. And then um, I'm going to continue to do what I did, you know, during this COVID time. And when I have those students in their fundamentals class in the fall for like a few weeks before Thanksgiving, um, then we'll do all their vitals, but then I'm gonna start sending them home with supplies. Um, so that way they can continue to do like the things for, you know, sterile fields and um, you know, even diabetic foot screening, things like that. So um, as I, as is here, you know, then in lab, we can focus on more invasive things and then the, the effective skills that we have to demonstrate. Um, and again, what's nice is instead of having to schedule, you know, all these students for all these checkoffs, like setting up a sterile field or doing bandaging techniques or whatever, now they're just doing it on their own. Um, and then I can, you know, on a Sunday afternoon, look through the videos. Um, so I've found that it really has allowed us um, to be able to focus on what we really need to in the lab, especially since we're limited with the number of students we can have in lab right now where before we had 16 now because of distance social distancing we can have only have you know like four to six so now we can focus on the other things and um yeah my goal is is to con continue to use this um you know for as long as i'm doing this because i just absolutely love the way that this helps me and our faculty get through this and so we're really just interested in anything, um, you know, if there's any interest in applying this to any of your other programs, my role at Crossbraining at this point, I've transitioned out of development and I'm really just working as a, what we call a product owner. So my goal is to work with a small number of really um, progressive customers and try to make sure that the product best fits the needs of their, um, their environment. And so I'd love to um, just get some uh, feedback from you guys and uh, answer any questions you may have. Yeah, and I just saw um, Karen's question and yes, definitely. And one thing like with the reflection questions, um, I'm actually using that to hit a lot of our standards that, um, you know, like if it's a discuss, you know, the implications of something. So I'll use that as my reflection question. Um, so if it goes along with that skill, then they can answer the question through that. Um, so I'm using each of those pieces, um, you know, as ways to hit those standards that we have to meet. And the good thing was, is that um, I actually presented this to Sarah Marino as well. And, um, you know, she thought it was great. So, yep. And then I just say up the reflection questions for effective, definitely, as long as it's not, you know, um, some of them where they have to like demonstrate, but even with some of it, I mean, actually one of the big things I did too was all of the first aid things. So, you know, responding to patients with the, um, you know, syncope and bleeding and all of that, they did all of those from home as well. Um, you know, so then they were able to answer the effective related questions um, about, you know, uh, you know, just the handling an emergency situation and um, how people would respond. So I had questions in there about, you know, what can you expect from the patient and how they would be feeling, um, you know, emotionally and mentally with the situation. So, um, yeah, I think that I've got 20 20 to 22 different assignments um, that are all under our cognitive, or excuse me, our psychomotor um, skills. 
So they will check would a it, lot of uh, Would it be possible for you to maybe just share your screen for a second and show a couple of those? Hopefully. <laughs> I can Putting you on the spot. No, that's fine. Um, so Kristen, while you're looking, I have another question. Yeah. Um, and I'm sorry, the lawnmowers are in full gear here and the windows are closed, sorry. Um, <laughs> can, because of, you know, KHAP and ABHAS and whatever, are you saving each of those individually so that that is um, proof that it was completed or how are you saving for proof that this was completed? Um, well, either way, I mean, it's documented, but all of these, um, cause I still have access to like all, cause I create different cohort, um, groups and then you can also just download them, um, and put it in the student's file is an MP4. So our long-term plan, we've got a feature on our roadmap to add an archive, um, Cape functionality so that when you get to the end of a, a cohort, you can basically click archive. It will save all of those videos. So you've got that lasting um, documentation of that skill. And then, um, but you still have the ability to kind of go back and look for it without cluttering up your dashboard. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing so that okay. um, yep. I've got one you the up, ability so. to. So this is and Linda, GRCC, just to get back to Karen's. Um, the accreditation just uh, mandates that you uh, have a blank copy right. and, and so the whatever's in the grade book to assess. We don't have to keep the actual student right. book for that demonstration anymore. No, and that's the thing is unless, um, you know, it's requested during the site visit or whatever. Um, but I know I just had my site visit 2018 and yeah like you said it's they're just wanting to see the blank assessment or what you're doing all right so i am going to share okay can everybody see that yes okay so we'll see hopefully we get volume two so this one this was a first aid one so obviously you can see um she is at home <laughs> Assist the person and help to bend forward, placing head between the knees. If the patient faints, lay him or her flat on his or her back and elevate the feet and legs with a pillow. Loosen the patient's clothing and may supply a blanket for warmth. Alert the provider and call 911 to document the incident. Okay, so there's one. Um, let me see. I look at one. I'll mention too while she gets to the second one that um, a thing too is the students can do it during the day and then at night when they have more time or their house is more quiet they can add the vocal over it so it gives students who are at home or who are parents or working more time to complete these assignments. Yeah, exactly. And so, and that is what's nice. The students were using cell phones, computers, whatever, and they would just record their videos. And then, then like Ariel, so when they get home, then they put it all together, do their narration in a quiet place. And one thing too that Mike didn't mention, but this is one of the coolest things about this, is that while they're taking the video, it scrubs any sound. So there's no background noise at all. Um, so it's basically just a silent video. So then when they put their narration on, there's no outside noise that is going to be there from the lab or whatever. So this one was an injection. And again, what was tough is it is only 45 seconds. Um, so, and you'll see, it's so funny because the students started getting smart and they're like, well, I've got this section of washing my hands. So I could just use that same video for intramuscular sub Q. So then our patients would change. <laughs> So it'd be a different patient. I'm like, hey, if you figured it out, go go for it. Because they, you know, they use those critical thinking skills to go, oh, I could actually just merge these together. So this one is an injection. I'll show this. Identify the patient using two identifiers. Landmark the injection site using the acromion process. Disinfect with an alcohol pad. Put on 
the appropriate size gloves. Pull the skin taut. Give the injection at a 90 degree angle. Safety the needle. Massage the site and place the bandage. Document the injection. And then I Kristen. did want to add oh. um, that scrubbing the audio is very intentional um, because we wanted the students to have to separately think about what to capture and then think about what to say and not just do an off the cuff um, video. And I think that that definitely helps with two things. One is um, separating those seems to help students. Um, with uh, just the process of having to think about both of those separately seems to help with retention. We don't have anything, um, we don't have any white papers or anything yet to, uh, to validate that, um, but we're working on it. The other thing is that forcing the students to watch the video and then um, record their narration, they'll notice things that they've done wrong and um, self-assess while they're trying to narrate it and then go back and fix the video. And then Kristen, a question was asked in the chat box. It says, can we see the questions, please? We can learn from the questions also. Yep, I'm on it. So I, I don't, I don't want to put you on the spot again. But nope. could you, could no, you I'm pull, pulling. Yeah, just pull up a lesson and show them. Yep, that's what I'm getting to now. Thank you. Um, let's see. All right, let me go oh. back to here. I'm well, actually, the thing, it sounds like you can add um, patient teaching at the same time if they're not narrating what they're doing. Um, Kristen, you made a comment earlier that, or I think Mike said it, um, that the students end up like giving the patient instructions. And of course, we all know that's one of our communication right. um, checkoffs. And when I think back years ago, those checkoffs had so much of the critical thinking and they had to be able to understand what they were doing mm -hmm. um, and why they're doing it, not just how they're doing it. I think that's great. I think this would be a, a, a very good way of including that. Um, but my question actually is the assessment part. If the students review their video, A, they can redo it. Or B, do you allow them to um, correct what they did wrong um, while they're giving their narrative back? Um, well, the thing is, is that I don't see, well, I, and I'll actually show you. Can you guys see this? Yes. Okay, so um, like when you look at this, this shows that if I have a blue little video thing, it shows that they've completed it. So they've done the video, the narration, and answered any reflection questions. So I actually wait until they're completely done before I look at it. And then once I look at it, if I see that they've done something wrong, because I actually had a student recently, she did the wrong um, setup for wound care. Um, let's see if she's got it done yet. Probably not. Oh, she does, amazing. Okay, so um, like in this situation, this one is setting up a sterile field for doing wound care. Um, she did the wrong one. She did setting up a sterile field for assisting with um, a procedure instead of using the sterile gloves and all of that. So um, I just, you know, emailed her and said, you did the wrong setup, so you need to redo it. Um, so then they just redo it. So I know that Mike and I have been talking about the fact that it would be nice to, for me to be able to, uh, give them assessment and feedback in cross braining. Um, so that's the hope for the future is that there will be an option to be able to do that. Yeah, that is on our roadmap. Um, we're hoping to begin working on that in fall. Um, I don't know, there's a few things that we've really, um, we've learned both working with Kristen in the higher ed space compared to the classroom. Uh, K-12 classroom, but then also with this new, you know, embracing distance learning for more items. Um, having notifications 
and having in-app feedback. And our ultimate goal for feedback is that you could pause the video, highlight a particular section, and then leave a comment, and that would go back and notify the student. Um, I am actually interested in your input on what you mentioned, Karen. Um, would it be, would, do you prefer to use this as a, like a tool for coaching? Or would you want the ability to lock the video so once they turn it in, they can't change it? Because as of right now, we allow the students to, um, to make as many edits as they want. Um, but I would be interested, so based upon what Kristen has said, we're already setting uh, some additional settings on a particular assignment that would allow you to specify how long you want it to be. Um, so as we're looking at different settings we would have as assignment by assignment, I'm curious, would you want the ability to lock it so that once they turn it in, they can't change it? Or would you prefer that they can redo it until they get it right? Well, okay, this is my personal opinion. Um, if it's a, uh, you know, go, no, go, you either get 100% the first time, you know, or you don't, then it's, then it's, it's locked, it's period. If they're allowed, you know, two attempts and they get a percentage off for each attempt they do, I mean, I would think that there's a way of setting how many times they can do it, but it is a competency, it is a skill that needs to be proficiently um, executed and, um, you know, they can practice all they want, but by the time they get to whoever the instructor is and they're doing the assessment of that skill, it should be 100%. So I don't know what others think on that. Well, and what I'm doing, Karen, because in our labs with our skills, we give two attempts. So they have to get an 85% with two attempts max. So the way I've been using this is they, like you said, they're able to practice as much as they want and then they submit it to me. And then if they have an issue, like the one I mentioned, um, then I will say, okay, go back. And then that second attempt is the one that has to be correct. Okay. So that's, now, um, uh, I would agree. I would agree. We need an end uh, where it's final uh, because then a student could potentially, once the instructor has graded it, could come back to say they don't like the grade and change it after the instructor has graded it. And then, but what's, what we would see would be the most latest version. So uh, there has to be a time where it's, it's final, no changes. Well, and so I think too, because what I've done is, I mean, with mine, I've just had a due date. So, you know, they have their due date and then I put their grade in and I don't care if they do it 50 more times, their grades in because it was a due this day. So Christian, how do you get them to have their two attempts? I mean, how do you, you what I, it first and then, um, and when they didn't get um, 85, do you say you got to redo it again and that will be your final attempt? Yes. Yeah. So, and the good thing, and this is the thing that's been great about this because with me not sitting or standing there watching them do the skill, they have a lot less nerves <laughs> and stress. Yeah. Um, I can see how that would happen. Yeah. So I have only had, I mean, probably in the time I've been doing this, two students that I had to send something back and say, you need to do this again, because this is what you did wrong. Um, other than that, they, it's been unbelievably awesome because they submit it and it's, it's beautiful they're doing just an awesome job with it. So, um, but again, a lot of that is because, you know, they're practicing it and, you know, and I tell them practice before you record it. And then when they do their recording, they'll go back and look and go, oh, I need to fix this. So they're self-assessing. So by the time it gets to me, they're right on the mark. They're so, mo the so most students get their 85% or better on the first attempt. Oh, yeah. Definitely, yep. Yeah, because the fact that they're, they're the ones that are accountable. So they're the ones that are seeing them do it. And, you know, and I'm sure you've all been through this where, you know, you get done or you're assessing them during their skills. And then you're trying to explain to them and they don't know, they don't remember, they don't remember not doing something or doing something. And, um, or they'll argue <laughs> about it. That is true. Yeah. That so with, true. with this, they're seeing and then they go, oh, whoops. 
did that wrong. So yeah, it's been, this, that's one of the biggest reasons why this has been such a time saver for me because by the time they sent it to me, it's beautiful. And so I just watched them like, cool, perfect, move on. And I will say one thing I'm finding, um, cause these students are in externship right now and that was going to externship without having been in lab since March. And my sites are getting feedback and saying that they're doing an awesome job. And I think a lot of it is because of the fact that they were still able to do stuff from home um, and kind of keep up on things. I mean, obviously not injections or phlebotomy, but um, you know, things that were non-invasive. And uh, hey, uh, Kristen, could you do me one favor? Could you open up um, an assignment again and go to that status yes. tab for me? Um, cause just based on what you guys are saying, and once again, this is Craig Raymond, I'm from cross braining, but I'm also currently a sixth grade English teacher. And I use this app for the last, however many years, um, you know, that Josh has had this up. He, he was a colleague of mine. Um, so as these turn blue, as you see like Kayla Lewis, so as she uploads this first video for prepare the solution, if she wanted to, she could you know, send you a message or something and say, Hey, I uploaded this video. Could you just take a look at this step? So once it turns blue, you can actually go in and view mm -hmm. each step independently. You don't have to wait for the final video. So if you do have a student that maybe, you know, is like struggling or nervous or whatever it might be, and you just want to connect one-on-one -on -one kind of little chunks instead of the whole final project, that's a good way of checking in with them or if maybe you have that student that's just that overachiever, like, oh my gosh, I want everything 100% perfect. That's another way too, where if they're, you know, if you want to check in with the little chunks, little by little, mm -hmm. uh, then that's just another option. Yeah, and the thing is, and I just opened up where you can see the, the different pieces. And so I can even just look at what they typed for their narration. Um, oh, she did not type anything. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but she did great. So, and then if there's a question, um, you know, then you can see the reflection question. Um, so, yeah, let me pull up. So have you tried any of this for the administrative side? Um, no, not yet. This was, um, obviously things moved really quickly. Um, okay. Yeah. So, and that's one thing that I was looking at, especially since we're online for the next year. Um, our administrative courses are going to continue to be online. So we need to figure out, you know, doing, you know, the telephone stuff and all of that. Um, okay. And what about D? Let's talk about how much work is it on the instructor side? So mm -hmm. we've got down pat what the students do. We understand that you set up the lesson, the question, whatever it is that they need to do when you give them the direction. Mm -hmm. How about when you're assessing it? Can you go in and um, do you have to key in your response? Can you um, talk no. it through or how does that work? Well, right currently the way it's set up is there's no way for to give feedback in cross braining, but that's what Mike said, you know, they're working on. Um, so what I do at this point is, you know, like I said, since so many of them are doing a great job, um, you know, I just let them know that, you know, I put the grade in. So I've actually got this, um, you know, set up very small percentage of their overall grade because it's, they have to have an 85%. Um, but I put, um, their grade into JetNet, you know, our, um, LMS. And if there is an issue, I let them know if it's pretty much one of those no news is good news. So if you have a grade and you didn't hear from me, then you're good. And and in JetNet or Canvas or whatever you're on, mm -hmm. can they upload the same video into that LMS they, so you don't have to jump between the two? Just um, depending on your LMS, yes, because it's okay. just downloaded as an MP4. Um, I know for ours, they have a very, very small limit on what can be uploaded through JetNet right. Moodle. Um, so yeah, usually videos nice. are too big. Okay. So that's the problem. But, and, but what they could always do is they can save it as an MP4 in Google and then just share their link. Well, I, I'm just thinking for those students that like to debate, you know, I did do this or I didn't do that. And you had pointed out, you know, no, and that's why the points were taken off. Mm -hmm. um, 
then you would need to go back in and re-review. I'm just trying to think if, you know, I know that's part of what's down the road, but I'm trying to think right now. Right. Yeah, I, I've got some really good notes from this. And I think that, um, and, and as we implement that feedback system, we're gonna be working with Kristen and if anybody else here um, wishes to uh, to breathe some life into what that would look like, um, we're very open. All of our best features have come from user input. And so it sounds like um, as we implement that feedback mechanism, also building out some revisioning so that you can go back and see the video as it was at the point in time when you gave the feedback, um, which sounds like a um, that's some, uh, that sounds like it'll be fun to implement. All right, is there anything else that anybody wants to see before I stop sharing? <laughs> <laughs> well, Kristen, it looks like you did a lot of work to get this all set up and to meet your needs. And um, how how was it when you first you know, approach the students and said, okay, this is what you're gonna have to do. What what kind of- uh, Learning curve. What kind of uh, reaction did you get from the students? Um, were they well, all bored, you know, right away? Or did they wanna be spoon fed for the first time and then on their own the second time or? Well, I will say with my um, fall cohort, we were in class still when I first, you know, gave this to them. So I was able to pull it up, show them how to use it. I had them all, you know, go to it, create their login in class. Um, and at first there were grumbles. They're like, oh my God, and then this is like so much work. And then it, at the end of things, they realized like, wow, this is really cool. And, um, you know, like I said, even with the injections, they all realized like what an impact it had on their confidence. Um, and then my winter cohort, these students have not been in lab at all. They're finishing their clinical classes in three weeks and they just started coming to lab yesterday. So um, with these students, they it was all via Zoom, like me explaining how to do this and stuff. And the, I don't know, this group though is just amazing. Um, but they jumped right on it and they were so excited to be able to do something because the fact that here they are taking these classes and they're you know learning about all these skills and not able to do anything. And so they were just so excited to be able to do stuff. So, you know, that was nice to see as well. And I will say it does take a while to set up initially, but if you look, you create lessons. So now I have all my lessons here that I do. Um, and then all I have to do is when I create a new class and then students, you know, go in and um, once I have them in there, um, so I've got the students listed. So they sign up um, and they get in there and then I put them in the, the course. And then all I have to do is just put the lesson. So assign a lesson to that cohort. So once the lesson's created, you don't have to keep making new lessons. So then it's just a matter of organizing it into each group. Gotcha. Yeah, and I will say they didn't take and, long because I mean, it's just, I mean, it's literally like I just type like this one was easy, do this. Um, and, you know, that's about it. So you can do a lot more with it, but I was keeping it fairly simple just because of the fact that I didn't want to overwhelm the students too much. And based upon some of Kristen's feedback, um, we just had a release go out Sunday. Um, and so what we've added, um, and I don't know if you've noticed any of this yet. Kristen, um, but we've added the ability to upload an instructional video as part of that lesson. So that Zoom session that you would do, if you wanna make that into a, a video and just put it into the spiral bandage lesson, then mm -hmm. all you have to do is assign it and they can watch that and they can you know go through it. Um, the other thing that we've done is added a rich text editor so that you can, it's not just a blob of text, but you can actually format it, put in bullets, all of that sort of thing. Um, the final thing we did is uh, we added the ability to add co-teachers to a particular um, classroom. And so uh, now you can go in and if you've got, um, you know, if there's multiple people teaching one course, you can all view um, everything that's been assigned. 
Oh, good. So I don't have to um, illegally share my login. Correct. <laughs> oh, um, Kristen, could you actually just click on create new lesson? Yeah. Real quick. So the, uh, so the co-teacher could be a, a, a guest speaker as well, correct? Yeah, you could do that. Yeah. Could you, could you just type in just, yeah, lesson test or something? Yep. Perfect. So now you'll see where the video introduction halfway down, you'll see that's where Mike is referring to with adding the, adding the, vid, the instructor video and so forth and so on. Awesome. Yeah. Cause that was one thing. Um, we got the word that we were going online um, the week of St. Patrick's day. So I was actually in my lab on St. Patrick's day making instructional videos. Um, so those I put up on our jet net, but obviously, um, now because, and that's where some of my students were getting confused because I had an instructional video on setting up a sterile field for surgery and then setting up a sterile field for wound care. And they were videos in jet net, but obviously now I can link it right to the assignment so they don't get confused of what they're looking at. So that's awesome. So can you insert pictures in this uh, lesson set up here? No, but that is great feedback. Um, I will add that to my. I see I will a link. Add that to my growing list, so you can yeah, do I links. Um, right. And so you, if you did have that video or the image somewhere else, you could link yeah. to it, but right. not. Um, but you can't put it in line. However, okay. um, I'm going to add that to my growing list. And this was fantastic is every time we talk with potential users um, or every time I talk with Kristen, I probably come away with a month worth of development work that I would love to implement that day. <laughs> <laughs> and then one, um, w one more quick thing. Sorry, I'm thinking about the teacher aspect here. And this was, this is huge for me as an educator. And I think it's huge regardless of what level you're teaching. Uh, Kristen, could you go back into one of your lessons really quick for me? You have the spiral bandage. Yep. And that feature where it says teacher view, student view, what's mm -hmm. so nice with that is as you type something into the teacher view, you now can toggle over and see exactly what your students are going to see. So oh, that was my next question. Okay. Yeah. So the minute you change it on your teacher view, you don't have to like log into a dummy account or you don't have to look over a kid's shoulder and be like, oh, how does that look on your screen? Right. Uh, this, was a, this was a huge, huge feature when we came out with this, because it just mm -hmm. saved so much time that as an educator, teacher, I mean, we now can see, hey, what's the student actually looking at it? Because you know, the platforms always, you know, have their own uniqueness. Mm -hmm. so thank you, Kristen. Yeah. How many people do we have on the line that are educators? We have eight or nine. It's bounced okay, between so the two. Anyone other than myself or Carol do. Um, see this as a, a bonus or is it just more work? Our veteran window. You either have to come off mute or you got to type it in in your chat box. <laughs> this is Mary Pasito and I'm highly interested in this. I think this is awesome. Um, and just to Mary, give you what guys, what school are you from? Lansing Community College. Great. We actually had a. Um, I think we've got a meeting set up with somebody there um, okay. in administration. But okay. um, and to give you guys an idea of, we're still a we're a startup, um, so we're pretty flexible. Um, both, you know, all the way around as far as how things are structured, but what we're heavily leaning towards is a um, student pay model where um, it'd be $60 a year, or if they want to buy it for the entire, like a lot of programs seem to be about 18 weeks. So we're, we've been discussing $60 a year or $90 for the, um, for the entire program. However, we're, um, we're really at the stage right now where we're learning what that, those market conditions are and what we have to do to be competitive. And so we're, um, we're extremely flexible. And if this was something where you thought it'd be helpful 
for us to maybe set up a demo or do something along those lines. Um, we're, we're very open to how we can try to use this to, to improve education. One thing I wanted to share real quick too, um, since Jackson College was piloting, um, it wasn't just me doing this. Um, our sonography, um, vascular sonography program director was doing some things with it and um, our technical trades um, department was using this as well. So um, it definitely for our career-based programs, it kind of goes across all of them. And so I would say if, um, if anybody would like to talk further, um, I, I don't know if uh, I've shared my email, but I can share my email address, my phone number. Um, I'm very interested in getting as much feedback as possible and um, trying to just make this as useful of a tool as we can. And so um, feel free to reach out to me both by, you know, either by phone, by email, um, anything we can do, like I said, to just help improve education. Mike, I I'm can gonna... put that in Canvas so that everyone has access to it as well. In case, you know, like two days from now, they go, you know what, that wasn't such a bad idea. Maybe we want to see a demo or whatever. I can put that in Canvas so that it's there and it's not going anywhere. Okay, uh, one thing great. I want to mention too is, you know, we all deal with um, different programs, whether it be MindTap, Cengage, uh, Connect, whatever. And, you know, one of the biggest things we struggle with is tech support and students getting the tech support they need. And um, and I know this probably won't be forever because as you guys grow, it's gonna get tougher, but Mike has been awesome. And you know, like this weekend, um, a student was having an issue or a couple were having issues getting on, I emailed him. Um, he got back with me first thing Monday, got it taken care of. Um, so any of the little blips that have happened, they've um, quickly been fixed. So that's been something that's very beneficial to me too. Yeah, we are very fanatical about support um, to the point that um, every user, as far as I'm concerned, has the right to call me whenever they're having a problem, especially as we're moving into this distance learning environment. You know, students work all times of day and, you know, we've got to be able to support them now. How long will that continue? Hopefully forever. Um, but uh, our real goal is to just make the app so easy to use that we don't need um, to worry about support. Okay, so on the lines of support with I don't care, Pickett, McGraw-Hill, Cengage, whatever, whatever, um, there's contact for students and then there's a separate contact for faculty. Is, is right now it's all one and the same? It is. Mark? Yeah, okay. and we're in the process right now of building out our support infrastructure so that um, we should have a more formal process and we should have options to like submit a ticket and things like that within the app. Um, I can't say exactly when, but soon. Um, and, um, but, you know, as I said, definitely uh, everybody has the right to call me and um, at you know, just not after like 10 o'clock is my only request. <laughs> um, because if you're having an issue in your classroom, um, we've got to, we've got to get that resolved. And that's really my role at cross braining is really making this. I want every one of our users to say, I don't know how I taught before cross braining. And Mike, you're on Eastern time zone, correct? I am. Yep. Okay. And the company is located where? Uh, our headquarters is in Jackson, Michigan, but we are a 100% distributed company. So yeah. I am working from North Carolina right now, actually. But you're in Michigan, you're homegrown. We like that. Yeah. And most <laughs> of our team is based in Michigan. Um, our most, our three most recent hires have all been out of state. Um, you know, obviously we like to have people close enough that we can meet with them face to face. But um, that's, you know, we'd rather have really great people than have a mediocre person in Michigan. That makes sense. <laughs> so is there anything and else we can do for you? Uh, this is Linda um, from GRCC, um, Grand Rapids Community College. I'm wondering if 
um, you're talking with anybody at my school. <laughs> Because you mentioned that um, with some of the other folks that you, you have a meeting scheduled. So not to my knowledge, but you guys okay. so basically our plan right now, our go to market strategy is effectively we did our first college pilot with Jackson College. Um, that's basically over winter semester and it's actually done. We see such a need within the college space that we've shifted our focus to be entirely on the higher ed market. And so our goal for for this academic year is to basically do focus on just um, community colleges in the state of Michigan. And specifically, um, medical seems to be a an easy every, most people that look at this within both when we were doing K-12, uh, we did some programs with career centers. Those seemed to be the easiest. The other ones that were just super straightforward seem to be reaching out to people like you. It seems that the need is very apparent. And so our real focus right now is um, community colleges in the state of Michigan, specifically with, within medical programs. And so I don't, um, Grand Rapids is on our list. I don't think we've actually gotten a hold of anybody um, yet. So, so Linda, do you have a uh, name and number that we can reach out to then that you would be able to give them a heads up? So uh, say, Hey, you know, I had this, I had this uh, tutorial, this meeting and Here's a suggestion. Anyone that is from MAPSI, why don't you key in your name and your school and your contact number email so that when this is done being recorded, um, the, the people that will review this with the suggestions or questions can go back and it'll, it'll be logged in and they'll have a running log of it. Yeah, that would work out really well. The other thing you can always do is if you hop into our website, you can, um, there's a field that says request a demo and that will send me um, your email address and I, I can reach out. Um, typically I reach out within an hour. Do you sleep? Um, <laughs> I try. <laughs> well, with that, um, thank you everybody for taking the time today. I got some fantastic notes out of this. Um, I. I love participating in conversations where I don't fully understand the taxonomy that's being used um, because it helps me understand as a developer um, how, like, how to be cautious around using words that developers, only developers understand. And so this has been a fantastic conversation for me. Um, I've got a lot of really good notes. So thank you, Kristen, for, and Karen for helping me put this together. And um, I will reach out to, um, to everybody um, who is sending their email um, and we can maybe set some time up to talk further about if it would make sense for your programs.